Ladies and gentlemen on the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, let's talk all about the GTX 1080, shall we? This is, of course, the upcoming GPU in NVIDIA's latest iteration of GeForce architecture, also known as Pascal. So according to the latest rumours, the GP104, which is going to be the GPU core found in the GTX 1080 or 1800, the name is still a little ambiguous, will not feature high bandwidth memory too. Instead, we're going to be finding the GPU coupled with GPU. GDDR5X. The important uh, part of that whole acronym, of course, is the X part, which we'll go into in just a moment. So, this is also an article if you want to go ahead and click on it, it will be found in the video's description where I've gone more into my thoughts about this. So, getting back into the video itself, the GPU supposedly will hit uh, store shelves in around May time. This is just days prior to Computex, and the reasoning behind that is. Theoretically, at least, by the time Computex rolls around, uh, NVIDIA's board partners, for example, MSI and so on, which should be able to actually have their GPUs ready, uh, and basically it will debut at Computex, and then you will be able to rush out, buy it, and it will be a great marketing event. So, why has NVIDIA decided to go with GDDR5X rather than HBM2? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The primary one, from what we can understand, is because of the release date of the GTX 1080, for lack of a better term, um, compared to the mass production of high bandwidth memory 2. So I'm sure you've probably heard rumours, because we've covered them a couple of times now, concerning the timing of GDDR5, I'm sorry, well, of high bandwidth memory 2, and supposedly it's going to be hitting mass production in around the third quarter of this year, 2016 and larger DRAM chips were going to be on um, available to manufacturers in, 2000, uh, in the 2016 fourth quarter. Now, this of course does not line up with the GTX 1080 or GP104, depending on what you want to call it. Therefore, NVIDIA have had this kind of rock and hard place situation, so they've either had to delay the 1080 or they can go with a different memory uh, type. Now, in this case, they're going with 5X, which is very different from that of GDDR5. I won't go into all of the details, but essentially, the difference between the two technologies is that 5X produces twice the bandwidth per pin. You see, a GDDR5 hits 7 Gbps per pin, whereas 5X manages 14 Gbps per pin. This lines up very well with other rumours concerning the 1080 um, bus width, which is just 256 bit. Now, when you factor in the fact that, let's say, if you were to go along with the rumours or and the um, announcements from both NVIDIA and AMD that their next generation cards are going to feature twice the performance per watt of, let's say, the previous generation, it therefore lines up that you're going to have to deliver those cores with a considerably higher memory, more memory bandwidth than what we've currently got available with a GDDR5, unless you're going to go with really, really wide bus widths. Therefore, the solution for that is to quite simply increase the speed that those that those memory DRAMs work at. So like this, they can stick with a lower power envelope, uh, GDDR5X uh, requires less energy anyway, plus the fact that they can produce a PCB that's less complex, and finally they can put in 8 gigabytes of the stuff and it won't be prohibitively costly. Now, there are some other rumours we have. Con Supposedly, if these rumours are accurate, we should also see the introduction of the GTX 1070 as well. Now, we can make a pretty good assumption that this is going to be very similar to, let's say, the GTX 970 or the GTX 770 or other cards in NVIDIA's lineup or indeed even AMD's lineup. It's basically going to be a very similar core but with uh, fewer shaders, fewer ROPs, whatever they decide to cut down. Now, this also lines up very well with what we're hearing about power consumption. Supposedly, if these rumours are accurate, we will of course see Pascal on a 16nm FinFET process, nothing surprising there, but 
the, I guess you could say the current flagship or the soon to be flagship card will not exceed 225 watts of power. This means you will be able to run this thing on a single 8 pin power connector which is absolutely fantastic. Unsurprisingly you're going to see the normal smattering of ports, these include of course HDMI and DVI and two display ports for the normal typical multi-monitor configurations. Now we don't exactly know whether the 1070 and the 1080 are going to be exactly the same time but there's a good chance there's not going to be too much of a difference between them because a lot of users as we've seen with the 970 um, you know it's a pretty good price point. So what about high bandwidth memory too? Because <clears throat> obviously it's still coming it's not like NVIDIA are not going to use the technology. Well supposedly that's going to be used for the big uh, Pascal. So you can consider that the replacement of the Titan X or the replacement of the 980 Ti. This means that most likely we're not going to see the introduction of those cards until the third or fourth quarter and once again the GP10, uh, sorry, the GP100 which is the, the super duper high end Pascal is supposedly going to have two variants. The first variant is going to be aimed more at gamers, so in other words, you or I. And the second is going to be at professional level customers. These are people who really need high-end compute performance and loads of VRAM. Therefore, there is going to be a small difference between the two cards. We're not quite sure how the compute performance is going to differ, but what we do know is that the customer variant is going to have 16 gigabytes of high, ba high bandwidth memory too, excuse me, which is thanks to four, four high stacks, and then the professional level variant is going to have 32 gigabytes of HBM2 which is going to be thanks to four eight high stacks. Once again this ties in very well with what we're hearing regarding the uh, size of DRAM with Micron various other partners being able to mass produce four gigabit uh, chips um, in the third quarter and then the fourth quarter we're going to see that rise all the way to eight which of course coincides rather nicely with these rumors. Now, we do know a few other details regarding the, I guess you could say, Pascal lineup. As I've already mentioned, it's going to feature twice the performance per watt, and the flagship is going to offer a rather insane 17 billion transistors, which most of this stuff actually ties in and is pretty much going blow for blow with uh, AMD's Polaris lineup. One thing we do know for certain is that the GPU supposedly is going to offer uh, f uh, full half precision FP16 compute at twice the rate and twice the speed rather of uh, full precision FP32. Now that might not sound a really big deal to you but it does have some pretty interesting uses for compute uses or for potentially for gaming as well. In other words if you don't uh, that noise by the way in case you heard that was a cat deciding to move and it's rattling of its bell if you are not quite sure what that exactly does it basically means that for tasks which don't require full precision you're going to be able to simply run those tasks in fp16 uh, and you're going to be able to get a lot more performance with the same amount of um, power now you probably least listening to all of this and saying well that's great dude but what does that actually mean in reality how's this going to stack up with let's say oh the i don't know polaris architecture unfortunately we don't know too much at the moment and after frankly a fairly boring year that was 2015 in the graphics industry yeah we had some interesting stuff we had the introduction of the fury which wasn't exactly a massive revolution uh, in terms of performance, but it was quite interesting from the standpoint of seeing what, you know, high bandwidth memory can actually really, really do. So now 2016's here, and we really need to see the introduction of high-end cards, simply for the fact that, well, let's face it, we need them. 4K, virtual reality, all of these technologies are going to eat up performance galore. And that's not even getting into the fact that games now simply require more juice to run them. You're starting to look at the next generation of games and yeah, of course, that's not to say you can't run them with the R9 290 or the GTX 970s of the world, but you're starting to see those as the recommended specifications now, rather than the equivalent of the GTX 960s or something along those lines. 
This is all cool stuff, at least in my opinion. And yes, the cat is still playing in the background. Anyway, we've been stuck on 28NM for some time. We've heard about the Nirvana of the next generation, and frankly, I think now our expectations are pretty high. My own personal expectations are pretty damn up there. And it's irrelevant to me which manufacturer you're referring to, whether it's AMD, whether it's NVIDIA, whether you're a, temp, a Camp Green, whether you're a Camp Red, whether you're a Camp I don't give a damn, just give me the best performance per what? Performance per dollar, which I feel is the best camp to be in, quite frankly. I think we've all got very, very high expectations of what we expect to see in the next generation. And this, by the way, could also be transferred to that of, let's say, AMD Zen lineup. Let's face it, with the next iteration of CPUs, we're kind of sick and tired of seeing the same old performance. We want something, a nice jump forward. So, what do you say, everyone? Join me and join us all in the upcoming months, and certainly stick with us through Computex, which is my way of saying if you've not subscribed already, do so. You see how I worked that in all subtly? Anyway, I think I deserve a like for that. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um... Hopefully I've been fairly, I guess you could say coherent, considering I've got a bit of a headache at the moment. Sinuses are being an absolute bitch, but I'm getting better over the next couple of days. My plague should be pretty much gone. But for now, I'm going to leave you to it. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.